भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चोत्तम दी सरस्वती व्यास तथोजय मुदीर नष्टु अभद्रेश भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठिकी कृष्णे स्वधामोपगते धनमज्ञादि सह कलौ नष्टृशा पुराणार्को धुनोदित दिस इज ग्रंथराज श्रीमद्भागवत Canto eight, chapter five. Chapter five is entitled "The Demigods Appeal to the Lord," and we're going to read a few verses, five, six verses. We'll begin with text number thirty-seven, which is not written on the board, so I'll just recite the Sanskrit. प्राणारभुजराचराणाम प्राणसो बल ओजश्च वायु अन्वास्मसम्राजमीवाव प्रसीद तम नहाभूति ट्रांसलेशन ऑल लिविंग एंडिटीज मूविंग एंड नॉन मूविंग रिसीव देर वाइटल फोर्स देर बॉडली स्ट्रेंग्स and their very lives from the air all of us follow the air for our vital force exactly as servants follow an emperor the vital force of air is generated from the original vital force of the supreme personality of godhead may that supreme lord be pleased with us श्रोत्रादिशो यदाशानी प्रपग्निखम पुरुष से ना प्राणेन्द्रियात्मासु शरीरकेत प्रसीदता विभूति मे द सुप्रीमली पावरफुल पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड बी प्लीज विद अस द डिफरेंट डिरेक्शन आर जेनरेटेड फ्रॉम हिज इयर्स the holes of the body come from his heart and the vital force the senses the mind the air within the body and the ether which is the shelter of the body come from his navel balan mahendra sri dasha prasadat man yogiri sho dishanad virinchah ke bhyasya chan तो चंडांग सिरश्यो मे धृदत कह प्रसीद ताम नह समहा विभूति महेंद्र द किंग ऑफ हेवन वॉज जेनरेटेड फ्रॉम द प्रावेस ऑफ द लॉर्ड द डेमे गॉड्स वर जेनरेटेड फ्रॉम द मर्सी ऑफ द लॉर्ड लॉर्ड शिव वॉज जेनरेटेड फ्रॉम द एंगर ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड लॉर्ड ब्रह्म फ्रॉम हिज सोबर इंटेलिजेंस who is speaking this verse lord brahma <laughs> the vedic mantras were generated from the bodily holes of the lord and the great saints and prajapatis were generated from his genitals may that supremely powerful lord be pleased with us shri ravakshasah pitarashchayasan 
धनमस्थनाद इतरह पृष्ठ तो अभूत जौर्य से शीर्षो अपसरसो विहारात प्रसीदता न समहाभूति The goddess of fortune was generated from his chest. The inhabitants of Pitriloka from his shadow. Religion from his bosom. And irreligion, or the opposite of religion, from his back. The heavenly planets were generated from the top of his head. The, uh, and the apsaras from his sense enjoyment. May that supremely powerful personality of Godhead be pleased with us. Vipro Mukhad Brahmachayasya Gohyam Rajanya Asi Pujayor Balamcha Urvo Virojo Ankhira Veda Shudra Prasida Tam Nahasamaha Viputi. The Brahmanas and Vedic knowledge come from the mouth of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <coughs> the Kshatriyas and bodily strength come from his arms. The Vaishyas and their expert knowledge in productivity and wealth come from his thighs. And the Shudras who are outside of Vedic knowledge come from his feet. May that Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is full in prowess, be pleased with us. Lobho dharat priti ruparya bhudyutir nashta pashavyas parashena kamaham pruvorn yamah paksha bhavas chuktukalaham prasidetam nahasamaha vibhutihim Greed is generated from his lower lip, affection from his upper lip, bodily luster from his nose, animalistic lusty desires from his sense of touch, yamaraj from his eyebrows, and eternal time from his eyelashes. May that Supreme Lord be pleased with us. So please respond now. We're on text number 43. Dravyam vayakkarna magunan vishesham Yad yoga maya vihitan vadanti Yad durvibhavyam prabhudhapa bhatham Prasida tam nahas of Mahaviputi him Dravyam, the five elements of the material world Vayaha, time Karma, fruitive activities Gornan, the three modes of material nature Visheshan, the varieties caused by combinations of the 23 elements. Yet, that which, Yogamaya, by the Lord's creative potency, Vihitan, all done. Vadanti, all learned men say, Yet durvibhavyam, which is actually extremely difficult to understand. Brabodha apabatham, rejected by the learned, by those who are fully aware. Prasidatam, may be pleased. Naha upon us, saha, he, mahavibhuti, the controller of everything. Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. All learned men say that the five elements, eternal time, fruitive activity, 
the three modes of material nature and the varieties produced by these modes are all creations of yoga maya. This material world is therefore extremely difficult to understand. But those who are highly learned have rejected it. May the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the controller of everything, be pleased with us. Kindly repeat. All learned men say, say that the five elements, elements, eternal time, time, fruit of activity, activity, the three modes of material nature, and the varieties produced by these modes are all creations of yoga maya. This material world is therefore extremely difficult to understand. But those who are highly learned have rejected it. May the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is the controller of everything, be pleased with us. Purport. The word durvibhavyam is very important in this verse. No one can understand how everything is happening in this material world by the arrangement of the Supreme Personality of Godhead through his material energies. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 9.10, Everything is actually happening under the direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This much we can learn. But how it is happening is extremely difficult to understand. We cannot even understand how the affairs within our body are systematically taking place. The body is a small universe. And since we cannot understand how things are happening in this small universe, how can we understand the affairs of the bigger universe? Actually, this universe is very difficult to understand. Yet, learned sages have advised, as Krishna has also advised, that this material world is Dukhalayam Ashashvatam. In other words, it is a place of misery and temporality. One must give up this world and go back home, back to the personality of Godhead. Materialists may argue, if this material world and its affairs are impossible to understand, how can we reject it? The answer is provided by the word prabuddha ababadham. We have to reject this material world because it is rejected by those who are learned in Vedic wisdom. Even though we cannot understand what this material world is, we should be ready to reject it in accordance with the advice of learned persons, especially the advice of Krishna. Krishna says, Mam upetya punarjanma dukkhalayam ashashvatam napnuvanti mahatmanaha samsiddhim paramam gataha after attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world which is full of miseries because they have attained the highest perfection. That's Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, text 15. One has to return home, back to Godhead, for this is the highest perfection of life. To go back to Godhead means to reject this material world. Although we cannot understand the functions of this material world and whether it is good for us or bad for us, in accordance with the advice of the supreme authority, we must reject it and go back home, back to Godhead. Om Ajnana Timirantasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaham Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam 
ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ್ಚ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹಗನ ರಘುನಾಥನ್ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದನ್ ಸಹಗನಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತಂಶ್ಚ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತಕಾಂಶನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಶಾಕಲ್ಪದರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧೂಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌಡಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ we are very fortunate to be here today in shri dham vrindavanam and to be hearing from the shrimad bhagavatam of all the things that we could be hearing this morning how many people are hearing shrimad bhagavatam now so many living entities bewildered in so many ways but we are here at the lotus feet of shri prabhupad and hearing from his unparalleled in calculably valuable bhakti vidanta purports shila propad ki j first of all i'd like to offer my respectful obeisances and to all the vaishnavas here especially those who are senior and very much respected by me i personally feel very fortunate to have the opportunity to speak something try to speak something if you give your blessings <coughs> we can we can take some opinions what is the absolutely most valuable thing about spiritual life making advancement what what does it begin with what is the first thing that you require in order to advance in spiritual life i would like to have a, some su- suggestions desire. desire what else bona fide guru chanting hari krishna or faith hearing, hearing? blessings yes enthusiasm distaste for this world well all of you are correct of course the answers they're all fine answers but my answer is that the very first thing you need to make spiritual advancement is oxygen and we at least i noticed this because i have trouble getting enough oxygen especially at this time of year yesterday i went to delhi to purchase an air purifier for this reason and in delhi if you've been following these things you may know that the pollution levels in delhi are approaching the category that they call severe that means there are over 400 i think what is it anyway they have a certain system they analyze these things very very high level of pollution is very dangerous in fact the chief minister there called delhi a gas chamber for this reason so around 4 p.m. i left delhi and a mere 3 hours later arrived here in vrindavan and frankly i can say from my own pratyaksha pramana <laughs> that the air was worse here in vrindavan last night at 7 p.m. than it was in delhi at 4 p.m. so that's something to think about just like rup goswami says i don't want to get too far afield here we don't have much time but he says that just by coming in contact with a with a particle of water that is blown off of the yamuna in the breeze 
one becomes freed from all sins and so fortunate. What to speak of actually bathing in the Yamuna? But who can bathe in the Yamuna? Now, it's like it was 5,000 years ago. If you go in the Yamuna, the, actually 20 years ago, 20 years ago when Srivats Goswami, the chief priest of Radharaman Temple, stopped bathing in the Yamuna, broke with a 500-year-old tradition with that decision. 20 years ago, the Yamuna was polluted 200 times beyond the al allowable, permissible limit of carcinogenic elements. Something to think about. So, <clears throat> the material world is important. <laughs> We've been discussing that we have to reject it, um, but that doesn't mean that we ignore these things. So, especially in Vrindavan, especially here in Vrindavan. All right, so let's, let's now talk about what our charges have said about this verse. Uh, first of all, dravya means bhutani, according to Sridhar Swami. The elements. How many elements are there? 24. Huh? 24, someone says. This is a Sankhya. There are different classifications. Srila Prabhupada mentions five here. Bhumi, Apa, Analu, Vayu, Kam. So in addition to Vayu and Vayu, we have Kam. There's another one. Vaya. What does Vaya mean? Fear. No. That's Paya. This is Vaya. We know, those who speak Hindi know this word, vayas, vaya, vaya, yes, age. But here Prabhupada translates it as time. Uh, he's following in that way Sridhar Swami. Vayaha kalam, vishesham bhotika prapancham. Vishesha, the word is used here. This is an important philosophical term in the system of Madhvacharya because he is a hardcore pluralist and he doesn't admit any kind of oneness at any point. There is never oneness between any two things. This is his fast principle. So he says that the distinction between, well, between one apple and another apple, they're both apples, but there's some distinction between one unit and the next unit. He says this is Visheshem. So we can think about that when we hear the word here, Visheshem. Srila Prabhupada has told us that Vishesha means the varieties caused by the combinations of the 23 elements. So he is acknowledging that there are 23 material elements in, in connection with the three modes of material nature. All the varieties, all the names and forms, as Kunti Devi has told us back in the first canto, these things are all what Sridhar Swami has glossed here as Bhautika Prapanchika. Bhotika prapancham. What does prapancha mean? Anybody know? We have this word in Hindi also. Huh? Entanglement, it can mean that. What else does it mean? Think of Kunti Devi's prayers. What is, what is one of her chief concerns when she's talking about the Lord and his activities? Virambanam. Virambana means cheating, <laughs> deception. Prapancha also means that. This world is like that. It's a de deceptive arrangement put together by the foremost of all deceivers, <laughs> the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We'll, we'll talk about this in a moment so we can say some more things. But just bookmark that idea. Yad yasma durvibhavyam. Because of this, this place, you cannot figure it out. What to speak of getting out of this place? Duratyaya, Krishna says, this maya of mine. Mahamaya, we're talking about Mahamaya. Yet the verse says yoga maya. So how do we reconcile this problem? <laughs> Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has discussed this briefly in his own commentary. He says it's implied here, one should understand, that because this cosmic manifestation which is mayeka, that is to say produced of maha maya, it has so many vibhutis in it. We're talking about these vibhutis in this chapter. These devas, they're continuing here. Brahmadi uh, deva krita vibhuti stava, we might call this section. The glorification of the Lord's 
opulences or his excellences, his energies, his wonders, all the vibhutis that are manifested by the Lord. So all these vibhutis, they are actually only coming out from the elements, the 23 elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, false ego, and on and on and on. So, and these things, including activity and including time, they are the manifestations of Mahamaya, which is manifested in three modes of material nature, sattva, rajas, and tamas. And that Mahamaya is nothing but the vibhuti of the Lord's own swarup shakti, which is yoga maya. Therefore, to save space, he's just going directly to the origin. Yoga maya. The, it's ultimately arranged by yoga maya. We might say curdle yoga maya. Just as this material world is Lord Shiva, we can say is curdled Vishnu. So this material world is nothing but the reflection of the spiritual world. <clears throat> They've said here, Tridasha uh, Prasadat, that the Lord's, what did Prabhupada say? His mercy. Prasada actually means favor, grace. This is what has manifested all these demigods. How many demigods? What are the demigods called there? Three dasha. Three dasha. Three groups of ten. There's, a, there's an anecdote about this. Someone said, how many gods are there? So they said 33 million demigods. 33 koti, actually. Then the question is, well, they can't all be gods, so how many are there? Well, in that case, there's 33. <laughs> this is called three dasha for short. But th even 33 gods, it's a little bit hard to please them all. So how many gods are there? Well, there's actually only three. Teen Morty. Okay, but are they all god or? Th well, no, there's actually only one. <laughs> Therefore, we say Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. So the same logic is applied here. All the manifestations of Mahamaya. Madhvacharya has described this very nicely in his Dwarasha Stotra. He says... Srishti, Stiti, Pralaya Sarga, Mahavibhuti. We're talking about Mahavibhutis today. Uh, srishti, Stiti, Pralaya Sarga, Mahavibhuti, Vritti, Prakasha, Niyamavrta, Bandha, Moksha. What, what, what kind of things are coming from the mere sidelong glance of the Lord's internal potency, Shri? The great wonders of this material world. Vritti, all of our engagements, our occupations. Professions, we might say. Prakasha, our enlightenment. Niyama, our discipline. Do you have discipline? Bandha, your bondage. Moksha, your liberation. Avrita, your covering. Sometimes we're covered over. All of it. It's all coming from a mere sidelong glance. Yasya apanga lava matrata urjita sa. That urjita. Shri. Today, this month, we're worshiping Urjeshwari. Urja means she's powerful. So this, this Lakshmi is but an expansion of this Srimati Radharani, who is the Lord's personification of the essence of the Lord's Yoga Maya. Srimati Radharani. All of these things, all coming from her. So. <clears throat> But the workings exactly, we can know this much, or at least we can accept this much on faith if we hear from, submissively, with faith, from a bona fide spiritual master. This much we can know. But exactly how things are working, you're not going to know that. You're not going to know that. Durvibhavyam. Srila Prabhupada's purport emphasizes these two terms. Durvibhavyam. One of the commentators has glossed this term as gyatum ashakyatvam, inability to understand inability to understand. But we don't really need to understand. If we hear from authorities, who are the authorities? Those who are awakened. Prabodhas. There the word is used, Prabhuda. Prabhudaihi apabadham. If something is proscribed, that is to say it's, it's disallowed. What does Sridhar Swami glosses this as? Apohyamanam, which means 
denied, objected to, or pushed out, excluded. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says it means apavada, it is criticized. Nisheda, it is forbidden. Prakrita agrahanam, it is not something to be grasped within this material world or even accepted within this world. So these are the ideas. And Srila Prabhupada's purport seems to focus on these two ideas. It is impossible to understand how the Lord's energies are working, but we don't really need to understand either. If we're prepared to accept that the great souls have said this, therefore I do this. If the spiritual master says that a rope is a snake, then we accept it is a snake. There's no question of speculating or bringing up, maybe we can ask our doubts submissively. That's allowed if we're serving sincerely. <clears throat> but ultimately we have only to accept. In, elsewhere in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada, in one night, very nice purport, he's described, what is the position of the common man in this material world? We have, a, we have two choices. We can accept the version which is given by modern science. We heard so nicely the other day from Hari Shori Prabhu. Thank you so much for the wonderful class in which he, this point was emphasized. Very one of Prabhupada's major concerns. That these scientists, pseudo, they're not really scientists, pseudo-scientists. They're pushing so many bogus ideas in the name of science, in the name of knowledge. We have to see through that. So, we, we can understand what the scientists say, that's one option. Or we can understand what the authorities, what the Mahajanas say. This is the, or here they're called Prabhutas, those who are awakened. These are our two options. And Prabhupada points out, how do you decide who is the real authority, who has real knowledge? He said, you look at the character of the individuals involved. Anyone who has been educated in the sciences, you know of a very well-known book, uh, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions by Thomas Kuhn, it's an English book. Or, for that matter, we can study, um, what is the name of that book? Cr Francis Crick and James Watson wrote another book. I forget the title of it now. About the double helix, about their research done with regards to DNA in Cambridge many years ago. And you can understand how science actually works. Or you can go through the system yourself, study in the university and understand that virtually all research, especially scientific research, it is carried out within an acceptable paradigm, acceptable to the scientists themselves. And it is mainly geared at next year's funding. <laughs> in other words, it's lust, anger, and greed-driven scholarship. So, <clears throat> look at the character. If a Vaishnava is decorated with all the qualities of these devas who are offering today's prayers, and those devas stay with that Vaishnava, this is another interesting point. Yes, yasti bhaktira bhagavati akinjana in the fifth canto. <coughs> We've heard from the, all the acharyas commenting on this famous verse, yes, yasti bhaktira bhagavati akinjana, that all the good qualities of the devas, they, they are manifested in the character of a person who is adopted or ex embraced, accepted, pure devotional service. So the commentaries there say that the demigods, they stay with a conditioned soul only as long as that person's karma requires them to be there. And they're very eager to clock out, so to speak, when that person's karma runs out. But when the devas come across a person who's actually a pure devotee, they become very eager to accept his association and they don't want to leave. They stay there forever. This is how we can say that the devotees have, they actually have, all good qualities, not temporarily, permanently, whereas the non-devotees cannot have any good qualities because they're only temporary. That's another point, but what I'm getting at is that yad yad acharati shreshtas tat tat evetarojanaha Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 
When we see a person who actually manifests Krishna consciousness in his character, then that impresses us because we also see that those who are cheating, invariably they will fall. Invariably they will, we, they will be exposed in one way or another. This is going on in the modern world. We see it every day. Okay, so this is Srila Prabhupada's purport, and as I said, he's emphasizing these two points. Number, well, we can say one of them is that we, we have to acknowledge the fact that our acharyas, our mahajanas, our gurus, they have rejected this material world and told us to go for the higher thing. Tamasi ma jyotir gamaya, as the Shruti Mantra tells us. That's one thing. And the other thing is that we have to understand that the Lord actually whether we're looking at his material energy or his spiritual energy, either way it's durvibhavyam. And how do we know this? What is the primary example of the inconceivable potency of the Lord? Dhamma bandhan lila. The Lord's being bound by Madhya Shoda. Kunti Devi has said in her famous prayers, you are, Mother Yashoda has bound you to a grinding stone because of your butter theft. And you're crying and you're rubbing your hands and your mascara is running down your face. And she says, I'm looking at this scene and you're actually afraid. I can see it. You're actually afraid. Even though fear is afraid of you. Jeev Goswami has very nicely uh, explained this pastime. And he says, this fear is actually real. This is the Durvibhavya thing. We, we, cannot, we cannot accommodate this within the can of mundane logic. How someone who is the source of fear, how someone who controls fear, who is feared by fear itself, how this person can become fearful. It is an inconceivable wonder. And Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, it is only for the purpose of rasasvadanam. The Lord wants to relish this ecstasy. The devotees also, they constantly hanker after this ecstasy of the Lord's lilas. And he does so many things that are of this nature. I, I'll give you a short list which... Um, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has uh, described in his commentary. Um, he says, by his very nature, Krishna is self-satisfied, and yet he suffers from hunger. This person who is Atmaram becomes hungry. He is Aptakama. He automatically fulfills all of his desires, and yet he's dissatisfied and wants something else. He wants what? Prema. Krishna is the personification of peace and pure goodness, but he becomes angry. Krishna is the master of the goddess of fortune, and yet he steals butter as if he were a beggar. Krishna instills fear in all through time and death, and yet he flees in fear of Yashoda's stick. Although Krishna travels at the speed of the mind, he's easily caught in the firm grip of his mother. Though Krishna is condensed bliss, sandrananda, he cries in sorrow. Yashodaya gadhamulukhalena gokantha pashena na badhyamanam rurodamandam navanita bhoji govinda damodara madhaveti Bilvamangala Thakur has described this. He's tied to this grinding stone with a rope for tying cows. By whom? By Yashoda. And there, what does he do? He's crying. He's pouting or crying because he wants butter and he can't have it. All of his friends are coming past and they're all pointing at him and laughing at him. All the gopis are teasing him. Oh, big thief of butter, now look at you. What are you going to do now? He's humiliated. He's tied up in this way. This is his condition, which Vishwanath Chakravarti is. Although he is Sandrana, Sandrana, uh, Sandrana Dhatma, he is 
by nature. This is the contradiction. He is unlimited and all-pervading, yet he is limited by being tied up. So in all these incidents, what is the conclusion? How is he conquered? Yesterday in the taxi coming back from Delhi, there was a taxi driver was listening to one bhajan. Bhagat ke varshame he bhagavan. It's the same point. He comes under the control of his devotees. He comes under their control. Voluntarily. This can't be explained as an imitation. This is Jeeva Goswami's point. You can't say that it's just an act. He actually feels afraid. He's actually bound up and unable to do anything about it. He's actually unable. This is Durvi Bhavyam. This is the point of today's verse. Durvi Bhavyam. So, such explanations arise from ignorance when we say that Krishna cannot be afraid, when Krishna cannot be bound. Actually, in Vraja only, practically speaking, only in Vraja, they know that he's really afraid, he's really bound up, he's really running in fear of his life, in fear, of, uh, not of his life, but in fear of the stick of Madhya Shoda, like this. So, realizing this quality of the Lord, Brahma, Shiva, and Sunat Kumar, even, they become astonished. Rudantam muhurne trayogmam rijantam karam bhoja yogme nasatam kanetram. Crying, Rudantam. Muhurne trayogmam rijantam. And wiping his two lotus eyes. Karam bhoja yogmena. With his two lotus hands. Saatankanetram, his eyes, they are, they are showing what emotion? What, what, what is the word for fear here? Atanka, just like we have the word Atankavadi, <laughs> right? Terrorist. So he's actually afraid. Saatankanetram, muhushwasa kampatrire khanka kanta. His breathing is quick, muhushwasa, again and again, he's panting. And Tridekha Anka Kanta. His neck is marked with three lines like a conch shell. Sthita Gravam. The necklace that is situated there, it's also quivering. Muhushwasa Kampa Tridekha Anka Kanta. Sthita Gravam. Damodaram Bhakti Padham. This Damodara is bound by love. Who's love? Who's love? Yashoda, any other answers? Bhakti. Huh? Bhakti. Bhakti means love. Whose love? So sometimes we hear Srimati Radharani's love because it is her rope only that binds him up. But Sanatan Goswami says it is not at Muni's love that has bound him. Why? Why not at Muni? Because he is the one who cursed. He took compassion on these two sons of Kuvera. And his merciful curse attracted the Lord's attention. And this whole Leela is played out only because of Narad Muni's encounter with these conditioned souls. So, if you want, the conclusion is this. If you want to bind Krishna with your love, in similar way. We can't do in the same way, but similar way. Then the one of the quickest ways to attract the Lord's attention is to become an agent for what is his own most wonderful quality. What is the most wonderful quality of the Lord? His mercy. You you manifest his mercy, become a conduit for his mercy in this world and bring conditioned souls back to his lotus feet. In this way, uh, we, can, we can also bind the Lord, as the evidence is not at money. Evidence is not at money. And so many, so many examples are there. <clears throat> so Krishna is bound here, he's crying, and the, the, uh, the kajal is running down his face, and Kunti Devi is astonished because he's actually afraid, but we, we know, we know that 
the Lord is, this whole pastime is taking place only as a manifestation of love. The Lord is so hungry for the Lord, for the devotee's love, and the devotees are so much hankering after the Lord's exhibition of love for them also. It is reciprocal. According to Bharat Muni in aesthetics, Rasa Shastra, when there is love, it is equal. Both partners, they enjoy equally. It is not, it's not like Krishna is so much greater than the devotees, therefore that he has greater benefit from this reciprocation. No, it's not like that. The devotees have as much ecstasy in serving Krishna as the Lord in experiences in receiving their service. For this reason, he comes in this age as Bhaktavatar, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just to taste that. We know this. Okay, there, there are maybe some other things we can say about this, but I'm going to stop here. Uh, in case anybody has any questions or any comments. Yes, Badrinarayan Maharaj. My understanding, based on the insights that are offered through the Acharya commentaries on this verse, is that someone may propose, actually the other night in Bhagavad Gita class, someone did propose that, you know, there's this whole world full of all things, and why, why do we have to give it up? There's a lot of stuff here that, you know, we can, you, you, you get the idea? So, this is why, that exactly. This is the point. If it's Durvi Bhavyam, then how do you know it's rejectable? This is the point. The, the implication is like that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Hope springs eternal, like Jarasandha. <laughs> 17 times completely smashed and humiliated. Still, he's thinking, well, maybe I just didn't do it the right way. We're all like that, isn't it? We all retain this hope. Hope against hope. Asha Bandha, you might say. <laughs> but in a perverted sense. So that, that's what, how I understand it. <coughs> and the answer he gives, Prabhupada, as always, th this purport is so wonderful because he just really brings it to its practical essence. What, what is the relevance of this and what are you going to do about it? The rel the, first of all, Durvi Bhavam. You're not going to figure things out here. You cannot get it right because it's just endlessly mutable and, and confusing place. This is the first point. But, then why reject it? How do you know it's bad? This is your question. And then he answers it. Prabhudha Because it's rejected by the Prabhudhas. Those who are really wise. Those who have been awakened. The Acharyas. In the beginning, this is the way it is. We, we have to accept some things on faith. And then when we act according to their instructions, then we realize, oh, they, they are, all, all this stuff is correct after all. 20, 30 years it takes, and then you finally figure out that everything I've been here, it actually all is true. Okay, anything else? Um, yes, Prabhuji. <coughs> Yes. There are a few places throughout the Shastras where we find yoga maya is used in a, in, a, in a context that you would expect the word mahamaya to be there. Yeah, I think it's, the, he says the logic is vyanjitam. Vyanjita means implicit or you know, suggested. Okay, someone else? Yeah, please. Yes. So on what level of devotional service does Good point. That, that is also qualified by virtually all of the acharyas. The point is that when one is nishkama, 
Nishkinjana Bhaktas. They, they are able to attract all the devas and their qualities and retain them within their hearts. They don't, they don't lose those good qualities when their karma, so-called karma, runs out. The devas like to stay there. They, I, we, want, we want this guy's association. This is the implicit attitude. So, yeah, uh, it, it, I would think it's, it's dependent upon our faith and the degree to which we've surrendered to the process of bhakti. Yamuna Devi, we were mentioning in the beginning. Mathurnena Mandalena Charunabhi Mandita Prema Nadha Vaishnavadha Vardhanaya Pandita. She is glorified by Rupa Goswami. <coughs> that she is very expert, Pandita. She's a, she's a scholar of how to increase Vaishnavism within a person. Vaishnavadha. This is. This is the great benefit of devotees' association, uh, and Yamuna is one of the best. So, by associating with devotees, by following the process, we gradually, gradually, we advance in this way, and then all these qualities that gradually and gradually and gradually they manifest. Twenty-one have been listed in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, but I'm sorry, twenty-six. But then uh, there are so many others. There, there's another question in the back, way in the back. Okay. S sorry, I didn't see you. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. No, she's making a comment only. Yeah, yeah it's a good comment. Yes, yes. This is valid. Everything you're saying is true. This, this is why some Vaishnava charges, namely Vallabhacharya, he says there is no material world. <laughs> it's quite possible to see that. So my understanding of this very strong statement in the purport here is that uh, when we embrace all varieties of the Lord's energies in the manner that you're suggesting, then the material world ceases for us. It, it all becomes spiritual. And <coughs> yeah, the mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Finally, in the corner here, he's been waiting patiently. Sometimes people have doubts in, about Krishna consciousness because they find contradictions, in, even in the philosophy, what to speak of in our behavior. <laughs> in our behavior there are definitely contradictions. But even in the Bhagavatam we can find statements you know, of absolute oneness, for example, and then we find other statements of absolute dualism. So it's, it's confusing. And this is the point that uh, Jeev Goswami dedicates a large portion of his time in his Shat Sandarbhas, particularly in his Bhagavat Sandarbha, to emphasizing the absolute importance of the Lord's own Shakti, Nija Shakti. 
And one very important aspect of the Lord's own Shakti is this inconceivable potency. It, it is not something that we can understand. We're never going to understand how everything works in this world. And we're never going to understand how everything works even in the spiritual world. That is our limited constitution. That, that, that position is only filled by Lord Krishna, who is, who is omniscient. So, the sooner we can appreciate the, that the nature of the Absolute Truth is achintya, bheda abheda, which means simultaneous inconceivable contradiction, then we'll be at peace intellectually. Okay, uh, one last comment. <coughs> Yes. Well, as we mentioned already, or hinted at least, that sometimes the faults are really there. <laughs> and that we have to be honest and humble and work on that. And it takes some time. If somebody is in the shower, it's expected he's going to have some dirt that needs to be washed off. On the other hand, if the dirt is in our own hearts, rather than someone else's heart, which is something that ultimately we can never really know. That's why we don't judge people. We, it's not that we shouldn't judge people. We cannot judge people. <laughs> we, don't have the, we don't have the capability. So sometimes the problem is actually within us and not in the other person. We, we see flaws when there, when there are none. Just like the favorite example given in the fourth canto, Daksha Maharaj was critical of Lord Shiva even though there was no flaw there, really. And it's possible on occasion some people have criticized Srila Prabhupada when we know that he's, he's flawless. So this is why we have the association of devotees. This is why we follow this process. We hear every day. We chant Hare Krishna especially because this brings out all the ugliness within ourselves and everyone, within everyone. And then gradually we, we, can, we can become uh, nicely situated in pure Krishna consciousness, but we have to be patient, enthusiastic, etc. Okay, I have to end here. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.